Good morning, everyone. We'll pray the chaplet before Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The chaplet of divine mercy. You expire, Jesus, but the source of life gush forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy open up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy, Blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
for the sake of his sorrowful For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 For the sake For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. St. Faustina. St. Teresa of Calcutta. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mass. It's a beautiful morning, Labor Day weekend. Our readings can be found on 920 in your blue book. And today we'll be looking at the question of um, how open, how open are you to God? How open are you as the man who is deaf and dumb is made open by Christ's healing? So 920, our opening hymn is 392. Let's stand and greet one another as we start church. Please join in singing our entrance hymn 392, Enter the Journey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we come to praise God, the source of all life, and he wants us to come with a willing heart. If we give him a willing heart, God can do so much in our lives. Let us ask God to remove those obstacles that prevent us from giving him a generous and willing heart, which is our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my fault, this fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We give glory to God as we sing together. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, 
Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon our beloved sons and daughters that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The readings are on 920. The first reading is reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication, with divine recompense. He comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert, and the rivers in the steep. The burning sands will become pools, and the thirsty grounds springs of water. The word of the Lord. Jacob keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. Praise the Lord, my soul. The fatherless and the widow the Lord sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. 
The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, through all generations, Alleluia. Praise the Lord, my soul. The second reading, a reading from the bit, from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in your glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if man with gold rings and fine clothes come into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes, and say, sit here, please, while you say to the poor one, stand there, or sit at my feet, you have not made distinction amongst yourselves, and become judge with evil designs. Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, do not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who loved him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephtatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. time I've heard this gospel this weekend and I'm really struck by one thing uh, as we start reflecting on the gospel is Jesus putting his fingers into the ears of that man and spitting and touching his tongue. What if Jesus would come today and go to Winnishik Medical Center and volunteer to heal everyone who is deaf 
by putting his fingers in their ears and spitting on their tongue. I wonder how the doctors there would respond to that. Just the fact of it. Fingers in your ears, touching your tongue, all of those things. It shows how close Jesus had to get. Not very sanitary in today's world. But it gets at something. And that makes me think of today, of the great advancement of medicine in helping people here again. Cochlear implants allow people who are completely deaf to be able to hear and sometimes for the first time. You can see adults and children and babies being given the gift of hearing by this wonderful advancement of medicine. When you see the reactions of children hearing their mothers and their fathers voices for the first time, your heart just melts and you're filled with gratitude that parents and children can communicate with one another. Has this advancement of medicine put Jesus out of business? Today we hear Jesus doing the same thing for a man who could not talk and could not hear. He says to the man, be opened, and the man speaks normally and can hear everything. He astonishes the crowd, and they say he does all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. What does this story really mean for us, though? If we can get cochlear implants and get the best hearing aids on the market. Today, I think it poses this question. How open are you to God? How open are you to him? What can't you hear from the Lord? How mute are you in speaking his name? How deaf are you to hearing his call? How are you mute in proclaiming his truth? Recently, Pope Francis has been doing a catechesis on the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians and the relationship between the commandments and our freedom in Christ. When the free gift of grace from Jesus comes, What's the role of the law and the commandments in receiving salvation? Here's what Pope Francis says. The merit of having faith is receiving Jesus. The only merit, the only thing that we can get credit for is an open heart. So what do we do with the commandments, he, he says. We must observe them but as an aid to our encounter with Jesus. The commandments that we were taught as children and as teenagers, the Ten Commandments that we strive to live day in and day out as followers of Jesus are aids to our relationship with Him. To build off last week's Gospel, the rules and the obligations of our faith provide the atmosphere of our relationship with Christ. Merely doing the commandments does not give us a relationship with Jesus. The secret ingredient that gives us a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is an open heart. An open heart. That's the only part of our relationship with Jesus that he does not have control over. And that's the most precious gift that we can give him. An open heart. A willing heart. A heart that is ready for Jesus to change us into people that we can never imagine on our own. That's the dynamic and the exciting part of following the gospel of Jesus Christ. But let's be honest, it's the one aspect of Jesus' gospel that makes us scared. So we pull away and we close our hearts to Jesus. And then Jesus cannot act in our lives. Every day when I start my prayer, I quote Psalm 95 to myself. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. We just sometimes want to harden them. And that's what makes the man who's deaf and dumb so beautiful. He was willing and open to Jesus so that Jesus could do his work in him. 
and the result was a new life. What parts of your life are closed off to God? How are you putting up arm's length to Jesus that prevent him from doing something great in your life? Are you closed off with shame and regret? Jesus can heal that. Let him open you to forgiveness and mercy. Are you closed off in addiction? Jesus can heal that. Let him open you to freedom and sobriety. Are you closed off in the desire to be perfect, perfectionism? Jesus can heal that. Let him open you to accepting your humanity with all its flaws and seeing them in the light of God's mercy. Are you closed off in workaholism? Jesus can heal that. Let him open you to relationships that give purpose to your work. Are you closed off in wanting to do it your own way? Jesus can heal that. Let him open you to his plan for your life. Are you closed off in unforgiveness and resentment and hardness of heart? Jesus can heal that. Let him open you to reconciliation and forgiveness. Are you closed off in cynicism and despair in life? Jesus can heal that. Let him open you to hope and new life and purpose. The only thing that we can give God is our open and willing heart, and he in turn gives his son to us who heals us and frees us and forgives us and feeds us and gives us purpose in life. Here's my prayer for us today. Lord Jesus, I pray that you touch every person's heart that is in this church. Please remove the obstacles that prevent us from giving more of our hearts to you. Please remove the lies that the evil one puts in our minds and our hearts that prevents us from believing and experiencing your unconditional and beautiful love. Lord Jesus, change us. Open us to your transforming and powerful love. In Jesus' name, be opened. Amen. Let us stand now and profess our faith together. We say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our petitions now. The response to each petition will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christians may open their hearts more fully to the grace and love of the Holy Spirit of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our That God may bless the world with peace and true justice. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may sustain and help those affected by natural disasters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the conversion of all those who seed on violence, hatred, and war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, As we celebrate Labor Day, that work and its dignity will be cherished in our nation with a living wage and may people seek to contribute to making a better society through honest work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life that come from holy and stable marriages, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Catholics to come back to Sunday Mass to receive the word of God and the sacred body and blood of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithfully departed, um, especially de- deceased members of the Pete Meyer and Hogman families, Deb Hubleska and Jameson Meyer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we come to you because we need you. Please fill us with your gifts and graces in this holy mass that this week we may spend our lives in service of you, Lord, and our brothers and sisters. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Please join in the offertory song number 697 for the fruits of this creation, number 697. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Teresa of Calcutta on her feast day, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us stand and at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Please join in singing our communion song, number 683, Christ Be Our Light, number 683.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Uh, please take a bulletin as you leave church today. Uh, just to put a bug in your ear, next weekend we're going to be taking up a second collection for Catholic Relief Services. It's the emergency arm of the Catholic Church responding to natural disasters and political unrest. There's plenty of that going around in our nation and in Haiti and in Afghanistan. So I thought it'd be appropriate for us to support that effort to our brothers and sisters who are trying to help brothers and sisters in need. So uh, yeah, and then please read the bulletin article that I wrote this weekend and there's some opportunities to grow in faith. So take a look at that as you leave church today. Have a great Labor Day. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Do the prayer of St. Michael before our last hymn. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our last song is... The number 422, Healing River of the Spirit, number 422. Bye.